there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. So nice to be with you today, my friend. And let me say right at the top, don't miss a minute of this program. I have some guests here today that are just going to energize you, excite you, bless you because of their story. I've always believed for Christian television, there's nothing like a great, great testimony. And we've got it today. Don't miss one minute of Gerald and Phyllis Mahan. They are evangelists today and they are the kind of evangelists we need multiplied over and over again. Just trust me on this. Promise me, grab a cup of tea or something that you'll listen to their testimony. And got another winner too to go along with this great testimony and that's creamy chicken tortellini soup. In fact, I'll tell you a little secret. I brought me a little mason jar so I can take some home for dinner tonight. I think this is going to be one of the greatest recipes we've ever made. So I will join Stephanie for that momentarily. But please think I'm not just kidding on this book, Promises for a Fruitful Life. When I look at what's going on around the world today, and certainly in the United States of America, people are really, they're, a lot of them are angry, they're scared, they're depressed. Seems like every day there's a, a new layer of bad bad news but the Lord wants you to have a fruit life, fruitful life through this and I, I think on the last program I gave you a little rundown of some of the chapters but I want to give the Mayhans plenty of time so I won't do that just trust me and get one you can do it by writing to homekeepers at box 6922 Clearwater Florida 33758 or that 800 number uh, is convenient for many of you, 1-800-229-0059. And we'll get it right out to you. Just trust me on this. And I'm telling you that you might find just one word, one sentence on one page. It's going to make your day a whole lot better and it's worthwhile. And um, being around Stephanie makes my day worthwhile. Oh, please. No, we're, we're buds. <laughs> we're really buds. We really are friends. So please don't write us and or write me and tell me not to pick on Arthleen Rippey. <laughs> I'm a big girl. She likes it. <laughs> Let's get this moving. Okay, I have olive oil in the pan. I'm putting onion, I'm putting celery, and carrots. And we're just going to saute those for mm -hmm. a minute. The amount, the ingredients will come up at the end. There's a lot, so I can't really tell you all of how much and of everything. And think of tortellini and chicken yes. and this wonderful broth. And a cream. And some yes, heavy, heavy cream. cream. Yes, so good. So, so, celery, carrots, onion. I'm going to saute it. I'm going to put four cloves of garlic in. I told Andrew, make sure you get my nails because they're never done. So here. No. Oh, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> they look really good. I, those are the <clears throat> Color Street nail stickers. They're so pretty. I know. They're so easy to do. I never do my nails because they never last. But this lasts pretty good. I thought yeah. they looked nice. So Okay. So garlic. four cloves of garlic. So I'll tell you that for a second. I'm going to put in chicken broth. I'm going to put in salt and pepper and thyme. And we're going to let that let us, let us reiterate what yes. we've told the audience a couple times. Because at my age, with nine great grandchildren, you can still learn. Mm -hmm. And we learned that when you chop up an onion and you put a cup of water by it, your eyes won't water. Yes, the onion. It worked this morning. Set, yeah, it goes for the closest source of water is what I read, mm -hmm. which are your tear ducts. Mm -hmm. So it's trying to pull that water out. So you have the, and, mm -hmm. it, and it she's works. done it three times and yeah. she hasn't cried. I chopped the onions this morning and usually I'm like this, you know, yeah. and my nose and eyes are watering. And so uh, where are you going to learn stuff like this right? except on home keepers? Chicken broth. Oh boy. So good. We heated this up a little bit uh, so we could keep they, um, cooking. How much uh, heavy cream? A half a cup? I probably would put more than that in it yes. myself. Okay, but. I'm going to crank this up. We're doing salt and pepper and thyme. You know, this really can be an entree. So good. Thyme. Because you've got the little pasta in it and the chi rotisserie chicken. That's what we got. Yeah. It's what, um, September. It's the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. And I am in full on Christmas mode in my oh. brain. And I'm driving <clears throat> everyone crazy. You know, that's one thing I love about being around her because about in June, she starts the Christmas thing. <laughs> and it's, it's exciting. It drives it really people is. crazy. Some yeah. people, it annoys. Some no, I like it. like it. But okay, chicken, please. Um, let me make sure I'm doing it in the right. Chicken, mm -hmm. Okay, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure the cream mm -hmm. goes last. So chicken, 
I don't and know, the friends, but I think you're going to really want this. And this one. was just a rotisserie chicken, uh -huh. so you didn't, she didn't have to cook it. She went to the store. You can't find a better deal than a rotisserie chicken because it's already cooked. Oh, and they're so good. But so if you've yummy. got some chicken in your freezer, just take it out. Yep. I would bake it and then slice it up. Yeah. Or when you make chicken, just mm. make extra mm -hmm. and throw that in the freezer. Okay, I'm going to crank this up. You don't need this, bro. Um, I just didn't want to fill the pan up too yeah. much. So we have parsley and cream that I'm going to put in, and, and then we'll, and then it'll be done. But I got to give it a minute because that mm -hmm. tortellini's raw. It's five cheese tortellini, and it looks so de. This is a full fledged meal right here. So good. Put a roll with it. Oh yes, a really butter, good bread and butter so with the <clears throat> real butter. Yes. Have you ever had real mm -hmm. butter like on a farm? No. I did. Uh, my uncle had a farm. I've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. I think every child in the world should have a farm experience. Yes. And um, and the parsley, please. And they did. Uh, my uncle would milk the cows, and my aunt would make butter, and it was better than what you buy in the store. That's for sure. I'll tell you what we used to have here in St. Pete. It was called Pioneer Camp. And my daughter went to it, and it was her most favorite camp to ever go really? to because they had animals, and they had yes. a blacksmith, and they had all kinds. She just, they did leather working mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Favorite camp, she still talks about it. Favorite camp ever. And you know, I'm reading more and more, I'm going to have some people on for education. Mm -hmm. I tell you, if I had young children with a phone, I would, I'd be the boss of that phone. Yeah, for, no for real. All right, my friend. Okay. This is not anywhere near no. done, but we're going to taste it. Going to take a little taste. Yes. And please listen to the whole testimony of the Maynards. Yes. Oh, my. I've been, probably never had better. I probably put more cream in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we can. We have more. Yeah. <laughs> if you want this uh, recipe, that information is coming up on your screen. You just get the way that's best for you. And then if you've never seen the Maynards, and they've been on before, uh, you're going to you're going to love them. I guarantee that. So you stay right there. Don't go anywhere. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, welcome, Evangelist uh, Mahan, and your better half. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Yes. Give me an opportunity to be here today. Thank you. Yes, thank well, you, it's so it's so good to see you again, and um, you represent a type form of evangelism that is very rare today. It used to be kind of popular, but I would call you that old time evangelist that. That's what God called you to do, so you're doing it. Yes, I love to evangelize and reach people with the gospel, Sir Salim. Uh, if it ever been a time for us to share our faith and reach people with the gospel, it's now. This world needs Jesus. And Jesus said if he be lifted up from the earth, he'll draw all men unto himself. So he's still moving by his spirit. He's still pouring out his spirit. And lives are being changed by the power of God. Yep. And his word is still the same. Yes, he's still uh, the same. This crazy yes. culture doesn't change <laughs> yes. that. Yes. Now, uh, how long have you all been married? Uh, 52 years. Whoa. She was my childhood sweetheart. I met her in the seventh grade. And so did she go with you through those bad times? Uh, yes. what, what happened, I went to Vietnam, um, was drafted in the military, and went off to Vietnam, walked point, got tied up in drugs and alcohol, and coming back to the States, drug addiction came in for 18 years. And Phyllis watched me go through all of that. And the she last stayed. part, the last part of my addiction, we were separated there for like three and a half years. But yes. when I gave my heart to Christ through the Ministry of Teen Challenge, sitting in a detox center when everybody had given up on me, and two brothers from the Ministry of Teen Challenge came in and shared their faith yes. and said there was a man named Jesus could change a man like me. And I gave my heart to Christ. That was April the 12th, 7:30 p.m., 1989. Whoa! And I gave my heart yes. to Christ and called Phyllis up, and Phyllis began to talk with me, and God restored my marriage, gave us peace, and she forgave me, and we just traveled the world, reaching people with the gospel. You 
You chose well. Yes, yes. <laughs> what, were, what was that time like for you? When you'd been married quite a while, and then his uh, life kind of went off the rails. It was uh, tough, but one thing that brought me through, I got saved in the meantime, and God told me to pray for my husband, and I, it was like, God, pray for my husband. That's why I'm in the shape I am now. We lost our home, our landscaping business. We lost everything, but I was looking, searching for peace, and when Whoa. I just cried out to God, that's what he gave me, peace to even go through what, what I have gone through. Sure. You know, there's so many things about your story that are supernatural. Yes. Not a lot of women would hang in through that. You know, there'd be a lot of bitterness after loss. I mean, if you lose your home, that's tough. Arthur Lane, I did have that bitterness. I had to have God to change my heart, and I had to be willing to give all of that up, to realize that it was stuff. It, the material things didn't matter, yeah. but having him save and not having go to what we call the bad place, yeah. I just wanted him to be saved. I didn't care about any of the what, material things. What a testimony. A lot of wives need to hear yeah, that, that, and that it will encourage them. Now, um, you were helped by Teen Challenge, right? Yes. I knew David Wilkerson. Yes, so. yes. And um, what an anointed Holy Spirit ministry. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, drug addicts are the least of the least because they're drugged up. Right. You know, and, and right. Uh, right. <laughs> you're trying to get that message through all the haze. Yes, yes. So, Sally, uh, I was sitting in the Howard University Detox Center, and I was hurting on the inside. I mean, I'd been on those drugs for years and had been through seven detox centers and in and out of jail. My life was messed up. And two ministers from the Teen Challenge Ministry came in, one by the name of Ricky Barzer from New York City. And I listened to him that night sitting in a detox center. And he said this. He said, the word of God says in Psalms 34, verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He said, if you get a taste of this, you'll never go back to drugs and alcohol. And then there was another brother by the Winston Gordon. And he shared this, a Jamaican brother. And he said, man, I was on drugs. And then he shared John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I remember that night crying out to God. And I said, God, I don't care if I don't get anything back, but I need you. And the word God says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that night I cried out to God. Tears came down my eyes. I surrendered my life and Jesus changed my life. I went through Teen Challenge for a year, uh, went in that ministry, stayed there, came on staff there at Teen Challenge, and then went on and got ordained in the Sinners of God and been preaching this gospel for 32 years. And I've seen thousands of souls come to Christ, headed up 27 mission trips overseas. So, I mean, God has been so good. Never. Even this weekend was powerful. Yeah. Reaching my family at a yes, family reunion. You, you, you never dream, you know, what God can do. Did your parents ever teach you about Jesus or anything? My mother taught me the things of God, but I went astray. I made yeah. bad choices when I went to Teen Challenge. And uh, my mother would always pray for me. She would always tell me about the goodness of the Lord. She loved God with all her heart. Yes, she and she would always encourage me. But Praise when I went Lord. into the war, leaving West Virginia, not knowing what drugs was about, and walking point in Vietnam, getting wounded there twice in Vietnam, and, uh, and I got tired of those drugs. And coming back to the States, drug addiction kept me for 18 years. But I can say on this broadcast today, Jesus still specializes in changing lives. And things yes. thought impossible. Yes, yes. All, <laughs> All things, things are possible to them that believe. Mm -hmm. And even the scripture teaches us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. And not only did I get saved, but I got filled with the Spirit of God. In Acts 1-8, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has Pretty come upon obvious. you, and you shall be my 
witness in Jerusalem, the day of Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So I love sharing the gospel. Oh, <laughs> I can tell. Uh, now, if you don't ever want to come to the Lord, you don't want to get around him because I, I've That's read true. where you're always getting waitresses to surrender to the Lord. If you don't want to know the Lord, don't wait on him because uh, you're not going to get away. True. And, That's and so this true. great thing, you, you came here for a family reunion. Yes. And you got a whole bunch of your relatives saved. Yes, my family. Many of them it. came to Christ. We dedicated their life. Sunday morning had an opportunity to preach at the hotel to the mm -hmm. family. Uh, my brother, Billy, gave his heart to Christ, his girlfriend. It was right there at the altar, came forth and gave their heart to Jesus Christ right there. Quite a family reunion. Yes, there should yes. be more like that. Okay, now you have all kinds of ministries. You have prison ministry, street ministry, ministry in churches, of course. And then you have other areas of ministry, uh, particular times of the year. And you, you uh, is it back to school when you give them food and backpacks and special Christmas ministry? Are these all to the homeless? Yes. What I do, I go back to my hometown uh, in uh, August. I go back to my hometown in, in McDowell County, one of the poorest counties in the state of West Virginia. And I go down and I have about 200 volunteers to go down and I train and teach on evangelism. And we give away uh, seven, 800 backpacks with all the school supplies. We give away laptops and iPads and bicycles and groceries. And uh, we just have a wonderful time and do a big thing in the park. And most of the time in a little small town of about eight, 900 people, we normally have people coming from the community. Most of the time it's 2,500 people that come. Just a powerful outpouring of the Spirit yes. of God. Hundreds of people are coming to that altar. We put up big tents, and I preach the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See those people coming, tears running in their eyes, yes. giving their heart to Jesus Christ. Uh, Phyllis, what's it like when, say, a kind of a homeless mother receives something physical? I, I think there's where the church could maybe do a little bit more. You go in and give them something. You give them food and you give them things give for their them. children. That really gets their attention rather than coming in trying to be real spiritual. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, they, Jesus said, you know, I was in prison and you didn't come. Yeah. That's yeah. right. They, they, besides the spiritual, they really need the tangible things well, especially their children, it really touches them yes. to get the backpacks for the kids who have nothing. And we fill them up with the school supplies. And they would say, some people even say, that's all I come for. I just want my kids to have the backpacks so they can have something to take to school because we can't afford you it. You know, I've had other ministries on who do that, like at, um, when school opens, but also mm -hmm. children that are in the system you know, that are going from one home right. to the other, that if they have a backpack, it brings them some dignity yes. where otherwise they'd have a garbage bag yeah. for their few things they do have. Yes. And I, I think we um, don't see the enormity mm -hmm. right. of something so small. Yes, yes. It's a large thing to them. You're now, right. you know, looking back uh, 18 years in drugs and miserable, miserable life. Do you ever sit back and think, wow, you've been around the world many times. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know if you've ever wrote, written a book, but you probably should. Yes, uh, I've been working on uh, writing a book. I got a lot more I have to get in order, but I want to write a book and put my testimony in how we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Uh, one of the things I want to take it to inmates and so they can be able to read that, it brings hope. Those that are, right. that were bound just like me that's on the street corners, yeah. that feel like there's no hope. If I could get that book in the hand and let them hear a testimony, because what saved me that day in that detox, and it was Jesus Christ, but that testimony those yeah. brothers brought in Nothing like it. and told me yes. about the goodness of Jesus Christ. And I said, God, I've tried everything else. I'm just going to give you my life and surrender my will to your will. Mm -hmm. And another thing, I'm in a good church. I'm in a great church at First Assembly of God. I've been, been there 32 yes. years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm on the executive board of directors with Teen Challenge. Wes Johnson is a pastor. And then my former pastor, Dr. Thomas Go Bronson. They taught me the things of God. And one of the things that Pastor Tom taught me, Sister Arlene, was this. He said to this, said this, many
many years ago. He said, Gerald, if you preach Jesus, 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 you'll always have a place to preach. And I stayed booked up a year, year and a half ahead of time. And uh, your life proves that he was right. Yes. 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 He was absolutely yes. right. Another thing I think your life illustrates is uh, how hard we work to get people in the church when we ought to go out there and get them. Yes. Uh, my dad was a preacher and uh, pastored good churches, but I remember when I was little, they had what they call a street meeting. Yes. And they just choose a corner downtown. And my mom played the accordion and they, um, daddy preached. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's taking it out there. That's taking it to it the streets, as the song says. I know, I know, because, you know, you think about this, you know, people are so fearful, mm -hmm. but God has not given the church the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. So I love street ministry. I love to get people and get them connected, not only yeah. when they give the heart to Christ, but to get them connected in the church where they can grow and mature in the things of God. We must take the gospel to the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my right. house may be filled. That's, we, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's the that's method. method. Yes. <laughs> we don't try yeah. to yes. <laughs> get yeah. them to come in. We're supposed to uh, go out there yes. and, and compel, compel them. them. Uh, what, how often and what type of uh, prison ministry do you have? That, that's so close to my heart. I've been in San Quentin. I've been in Leavenworth, you know, the big federal, uh, usually music ministry. Mm -hmm. But uh, where do you go and what kind of ministry do you do in a prison? We go in uh, Jessup Women's Prison in Jessup, Maryland. We go in there. COVID's been holding us back, but we go in that right. prison and preach the gospel. We go in Baltimore Triple C. We go in D.C. Jail, uh, Alexander Jail, and preach the gospel. And even when I take trips overseas, you know, I've traveled in 27 missionary trips. And every time I go overseas, I always go into prison and take the gospel yes. inside the prisons overseas. And aren't those prisons... Awful. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen pictures of, and I've been in them. They're immaculate. Yes, they yes. they take care of them. But boy, I've yeah. seen pictures of some of those overseas and in African places like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they're yeah, pig they're, pens. Oh, yes, yes they, they don't they don't they don't even get a meal unless their family bring a meal. So I've been in prison where they set oh, themselves and they don't have anything to eat. Mm -hmm. And I go in and just preach the gospel like never before. I was preaching in Swaziland um, in a youth uh, prison. Uh, I built a church in Swaziland about three or four years ago, and I preached in a prison with 800 inmates, uh, 18 and under. And probably 18 and under? 18 and under. 1800 oh, in, so I mean, 800 sad. inmates in there. And I would say probably 250, 300 was locked up for murder. And I went in and preached the gospel. We had... 250 teenagers crying out to God with tears running in their eyes, giving their heart to Jesus Christ. You know, that's the only hope they have. And do they ever have any hope of getting out of those prisons? Most of the time they get a life without, they'll never see the street again. Yeah, so we have no clue. Yeah, so we only God knows. Mm -hmm. Well, we are just yes. about out of time, but I understand you're coming back here in a few months. Yeah, I'm probably coming down in February to be with Steve Gobronson. Uh, Steve has a wonderful church, just a great young man yes, who loves God with all his heart. His father's with him down and Mother Bunny. And so he's invited me to come down and preach the gospel. Yes. Once we're down in October, but I'm already booked. And so it's going to probably be February, February before we can get down. Uh, I've only got a minute or so, but can you believe what your life has become? When you sit back and look at no. It was hopeless without Jesus. Yes, yes. Totally hopeless. Jesus is the answer. Amen. My title of my message yesterday to the family, Jesus can do anything. He's faithful. I, uh, I wonder if that's the only family in history who has a re reunion and you line up all those that aren't saved and say, okay. <laughs> You're not getting out of here. Yes, we nail them with the gospel. Oh, nail them with the gospel. They were so encouraged and built up in the things yes, of God. It's, it's just awesome. And, you know, I, when I look at my life and, you know, I, I give God all the praise and all the glory. Amen. I'm reminded of the words of the Apostle Paul to the, you know, he said in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we'll say by grace, not of works, at least in a man should boast. It's a gift of God. And then he tells the Corinthian church, as it is written, he that glories, let him glorify in the Lord. Amen. It's all Jesus and Jesus alone is still 
working miracles. And I'm so thankful. And you're doing such a great job, yeah. Sister. Oh, thank, thank, you. thank you so much for giving me an opportunity yes. to be on That's your show. That's a good way to end <laughs> with those great words from Scripture. Um, so let me tell Steve, come back. You bring Steve with you, okay? <laughs> yes. Uh, you stay there. I'll be back in a minute. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I'm sure you'll agree with me that was the most inspiring testimony, and Every one of us could learn something from it. Probably we all need something a little bit different because the testimony is so full. It's so uh, complete. And how I thank God for that because Gerald's life shows, absolutely shows the power of God. And I've lived quite a long time and I, I don't know of anything we need more right now than the power of God. I've seen it demonstrated in the past. I know it exists. I know the Bible talks about it. But when you are endued by the Spirit of God and you go out and the world is then your world where you go, whether it's a restaurant or someone else, uh, that's your mission field. And uh, the Maynards certainly understand that. And I'm so glad we could bring them on to just uh, be that um, example of what we should all be. And also that not just certain, not just being out, but being at home with your children and, and your family. You can take everything to the Lord right there. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a home when we got sick or something. <clears throat> the first thing we did was pray. That was the first thing. Sometimes prayer is the last resort. And I'm so thankful for an illustration like this of a husband and wife who got it back together of a drug addict who became completely free and victorious over all of the things that addiction can do to you. It is the power of God without any question. And please know on this Christian television network, we have prayer partners standing by and they're there right now. If you would like to pray with someone that this testimony has just stimulated something in your own heart and life that you need, share it with someone. That is, makes it a lot easier when you can pray with someone. And please join me next time, okay? Remembering there's no higher calling, none at all, than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTM Programs and then on Homekeepers.